Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. Do you remember maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, the, the world community came together and they banned chlorofluorocarbons. Now the reason they did this is because there was a hole in the ozone layer. The larger community looked at them and said, holy shit, there's a hole in the ozone layer. We need to do something about that. And in an odd and interesting success story, at least as far as I understand it, the world community comes together and gets rid of that particular chemical that's causing the problem. Um, apparently, scientists have found that the chemical is now being used. Now, this goes against the protocols that were put in place that prevented this chemical from being used, meaning the, the, the laws or the rules that have, that, that have been drawn up saying you can't use this chemical because this chemical puts a hole in our ozone layer. And we acknowledge that the ozone layer is real and we acknowledge that that hole is real and we acknowledge that the hole is dangerous. Ergo, we don't allow the chemical because we don't want to die. Well, somebody else has found that the acquisition of profit matters more than whether or not other people live and die on this planet, or let's say whether or not this planet becomes uninhabitable. Now, to be fair, they don't necessarily know who's using it. They have no idea who's using it. They just see the effects of it being used. They can look at, you know, look at the concentration of the stuff in the atmosphere. They can look at the hole in the ozone layer and they can say, oh, holy shit, it looks like somebody's using this chemical again. Um, they're able to place it somewhere over the Korea's um, but not necessarily nail down the source. You can imagine this is somewhat problematic. This was problematic the first time around when it crossed the whole zone, a hole in the ozone layer. Look, I don't know if this is a government. I don't know if this is a private company. I wager that this has something to do with the cost benefit analysis if this is being used at all. Usually people don't just use things willy nilly when they're negative unless they had a choice but using those things. Meaning, if a company comes in and says, I need to maximize my profit and I can use this chemical because this chemical is somehow cheaper than some other chemical, then they're going to use a chemical. Um, this goes with my argument that oftentimes the larger reality matters less than their capitalistic gains. And that's sad because that means that the societal impact of the decisions that they make doesn't necessarily fully factor into the decisions that they make. I mean, think about this. You pump something out the ground, you pump it into the sky, other people are breathing it. Shouldn't you get a say in how those guys are pumping something out the ground if you're going to be breathing the results of what they're doing? I think that answer is yes. If you have a group of people or organization or company that is doing something and that doing something is causing some kind of change in our environment, making this environment uninhabitable or at the very least more hostile, should you get a say in what those guys are doing, seeing is it, it is adversely affecting you? I would say yes. I'll say any sane person would say yes. If they're doing something that adversely affecting me, my kids, my ability to live on this planet comfortably, you should get a say in it. Yes. The answer is yes. The cost-benefit analysis that the capitalistic system takes into account doesn't take into account or factor per se the societal impact. They want profit. When ExxonMobil found that climate change was going to be the result of their behavior, meaning their procuring of oil, they buried the report. They buried the report because, yes, that is a big deal that is going to adversely affect the planet, but no, they don't want that revealed because that would adversely affect their specific profits. We are a ball hurling through the cosmos. This ball hurling through the cosmos can be a heavy asteroid that could be a black hole that's roving through the galaxy in some odd moment that knocks us all out plane. I'm making the point that there's a real reality out there that exists. The petty dramas that we get into, the arguments with our boss, the work that we do, the arguments with our wife, the, the, the lovemaking with our wife, the feelings that we have for our kids, these petty dramas that we engage in is subordinate to the real reality. That's a flat fact. The problem to this is we don't act as if the smaller subset of a reality is a lot better it is a subset. We act like this is primary. This is the only thing that we focus on. We pay no attention to the fact that there is a larger reality. The capitalistic system is just the game space that we accept. It's not a real thing. There have been multiple systems that human beings in multiple ways in which we've arranged ourselves. This is just one and I would say not necessarily a particularly good one. But the kernel of this, the main key point of this 
is that in this system, it's based on this idea of cost-benefit ratio because cost-benefit ratio is the thing that allows you to maximize your profit. How much can I get? How much do I invest? How much do I get? And how can I make more? How much do you want to make more? If that more entails using a chemical that damages the ozone layer, then they're going to use a chemical that damages the ozone layer. You can make all the treaties that you want. If they believe they can get away with it, they're going to try to get away with it. I always make this point that capitalism is like water on a stone. Whatever cracks there are in the stone is going to try to leak down to the largest crack. Instead of gravity being the thing that pulls it, you have this thing of acquisition of profit and trying to make more. How do you make laws to stop people who are looking for any any crevice that they can dig into to get any penny and squeeze any penny that they can out of it? Knowing full well that the societal impact of their behavior matters less to them than the profit acquisition itself. Let's take a look at the article. And again, this could be a government. This could be a company. We don't necessarily know which. It could be a company working at the behest of a government. But it is something, and it is large enough, of an operation that is damaging our planet. Someone is making banned chemical that destroys the ozone layer scientists suspect. Emissions of a banned ozone-depleting chemical are on the rise, a group of scientists reported Wednesday, suggesting someone may be secretly manufacturing the pollutant in violation of an internal international accord. Emissions of CFC-11 have climbed 25% since 2011, despite the chemical being part of a group of ozone pollutants that were phased out under the 1987 Montreal Protocol. I've been taking measurements for more than 30 years, and this is the most surprising thing I've seen, said Stephen Manzika a scientist with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration who led the work. I was astounded by it, really. It's a distressing result for what's widely seen as a global environmental success story in which nations, alarmed by a glowing ozone hole, collectively took action to phase out chlorofluorocarbons. The findings seem to prompt an international investigation to the mysterious source. Seems likely to prompt an international investigation to the source. Officially, production of CFC-11 is supposed to be at near zero, or at least, that is what countries have been telling the United Nations body that monitors and enforces the protocol. But with emissions on the rise, scientists suspect someone is making the chemical in defiance of the ban. i got to be honest, this idea of international law, I've made the point, I don't think international law exists. If somebody is breaking that, if the United States or the UK is breaking that, what are you going to do? I'm not saying that it is the UK or the United States. I'm trying to make this point of what does international law mean if there's no level of enforcement for that international law? What are you going to do about it if you find out that one of the major countries are doing it? If it's some podunk country in Africa, yeah, you may get involved in something like that. But what about one of the major countries? If it's international law and it doesn't apply evenly to all the countries, can you really call it a law? So I'll end it at this, but... Yeah, this was somewhat of a success story. And by the way, it says, but for now, scientists don't exactly know who or where this person would be. Measurements from a dozen monitors around the world suggest emissions are coming from somewhere around China, Mongolia, and the Koreas, according to the study. The chemical can be a byproduct of, of the chemical manufacturing, but it's supposed to be captured and recycled. They're making a the point that there's a chance that it could be an accident, like it could be an innocent case of somebody's doing it. But they strongly suspect that it's not that somebody is manufacturing this particular chemical either directly or as a byproduct of something else and not capturing the chemical. So I'll leave this here. I do environmental news because if our environment is not around, then neither are we. There is no such thing as a human being without that human being being somewhere. For all intents and purposes, there is nowhere else supposed to be except for here, meaning on this planet. If something happens to this planet, something happens to us. If they're doing something that is a detriment to the planet that's on us at the very least it's going to adversely affect us so you should know about what people are doing when it's going to be something that may adversely affect you your kids or your grandkids i'll leave it here all right guys if you enjoy the content please feel free to share like subscribe and of course you can always support through patreon they they believe that they can corral capitalism that they could put a leash on it and they could just ride it around how do you find people who are doing stuff like this? Rogue operations, operations that just blow this off and say, we're going to do whatever we need to do. And whatever you want to say, meaning from the standpoint of law and everything else, the law itself is trying to prevent a behavior that they believe can somehow make them profit. 
If they think they can get around the law, they're going to try to get around that particular law. It's just like financial stuff. If they believe they can get around a financial law, that they can make more cash from that financial law, they're going to try to get around it. Water on a stone, any cracks in that stone is going to try to get into the cracks. Um, but yeah, I'll end it here. I'm not going to keep this for long. All right, guys, you all have a good one. Some of these stories are worrying. I mean, some of the nuclear reactor stories are terrifying. Um, not to mention the climate change stuff with scientists coming out saying like 10 years, kiss your ass goodbye. Uh, because no changes have been made and people have this belief that technology is going to somehow magically save them later on so they can do whatever they want now. We're living in a pivotal time in human history. At least I think we are. Our technology has rapidly expanded, but our consciousness have not met up with the level of our technology. Meaning that we can literally obliterate ourselves on this planet and our value system is still in this kind of backwards, violent culture. And if you don't believe me, look at the movies. One movie after the next, shooting this person in the face, murdering this person, chopping this guy's heads off, torturing this guy. Look at our video games, torturing somebody in the video game. I'm saying all of these things are just reflections of us. This is a violent culture. We have Simes, Simes in Virginia, join the military. We fight the win. We shoot people in the face to win. This is perversely violent. Look at the way we talk about guns in our society. We're people walking in Starbucks with weapons. We don't see it because we're ensconced in it. But this is a violent fucking society. I'm sorry, that's kind of a side note. I'm just making a point. We need to grow up. And growing up means being good stewards of our environment. Not because there's some kind of hippie thing. But purely because we live on it. If we're not going to take care of it, we're going to suffer for not taking care of it. This is not purely a just, you know, let's all be one with Mother Earth. It's if I want to live in Mother Earth and I want to breathe clean air, drink clean water, then I can't necessarily let each and every one of these guys try to maximize their profit at my expense and the expense of everybody else on this planet. So there is a potential hole growing in the ozone layer based on a chemical that was supposed to be banned that's now increasing in the amount and the rate that they're exposing. And they don't necessarily know where it's coming from. So I'll end it here. You guys have a good one.